Okay. Okay. Hi, I'm Natalie. I'm your host of the Girly Paneurs. And today I have a very, very special guest and friend. I want to welcome Jasmine. She is a content strategist and she helps businesses have an online and grow their presence online. So welcome, Jazz, to the Girly Paneurs podcast. Hi, thank you for having me. Of course. I'm so excited to share your story and give people insight a little bit behind the scenes of your day-to-day operations. So do you want to start off by telling us, like, who is Jasmine? What is it that you do? What is your title? And just a little behind the scenes of who you are. Yeah. So I'll make my story kind of short because there's a lot. (laughs) Um, So I actually am from Ohio. Um, I moved to Arizona about eight months ago. I actually graduated in Ohio with my degree in social work and psychology. Um, Growing up, my family was always like stuck in restaurants. My dad always had to manage a restaurant growing up. So I saw the effects of him being an entrepreneur and kind of getting tired all the time of being in the restaurant all the time. So for him, it was really cool for me to just get a degree. Like, you know, all Latino parents say, get a degree, go to college. Like that's your, that's your safety plan. And my last year of college, um, I was actually working my corporate job and then also going to school full time. And they told me that they had to change the schedule because of the pandemic um, and they were laying off a lot of people. So they said, you either move to the morning schedule or we have to let you go. And so I kind of had to take a choice. I'm like, do I really want to get like another corporate job and go through the same thing and hustle, go to the school in the morning and, and work a full time job? And it was just something I don't I don't know out of nowhere. It was just like, I think that you get like a feeling when mm-hmm. when you take like a chance on yourself. Uh, I know me and Natalie talked about it, but you kind of just have to like trust your gut instinct and and take a chance on yourself. And out of nowhere, I, I, I told myself, I'm like, I have my stimulus check. Like if anything happens, like <laughs> that will hold me over. Yeah. I don't know what I was going to do, but luckily, thank God, like everything worked out. I started my business. Um, so my business was actually a Hispanic translations community, or I should say uh, translations company. But I only started my business because of the connections that I had already had in the community by doing like nonprofit organizational work, which I did in in college when I started it. Um, So out of that, out of those connections, I really started a business because I saw how needed especially translations in the in the hispanic community was to make doctor's appointments to make simple you know simple calls here and there it's really a struggle so that's really where my business started and then a lot more people were asking me you know you're so tech savvy like how do you do social media how do you do this how do you do that and i never even thought that social media management was a job um i didn't yeah. even know how it paid I, I didn't know anything about it and all of a sudden i just started learning a little bit here and there um and before i knew it Um, long story short, I really had to fail. So I really had to go through like a lot of fails in my business to really understand, okay, where do you want to take your business? And how do you want to set up your foundation? Because if you don't have a strong foundation, it will crash on you. So Mm -hmm. a little bit longer, but that is a little bit about me and kind of to where I got here in my business journey. Yeah. So how did you take that decision? Like, I know you said you started off in a different career, right? Translating and people were asking you, oh my God, like you're so tech savvy. Like, can you help me with my social media? At what point did you decide? Like, you know what? Maybe I can manage people's social media or like, maybe this is something I can get into. Like, did how did you know about this space? Because for me, it's 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 fairly it's fairly new to me. I'm like, wow, this is so crazy. Like people li- live off of like managing people's social media. So how did you know like this was a potential career? How did you know that you can live off of this? Like literally your full time job? How did you get into it? Yeah, honestly, like I always say, YouTube University is so great. Like <laughs> YouTube will teach you so much. But honestly, like, now that you ask that question, I really, really don't know. Like I really, really don't even know how I got into it. I just know that I think it was like during the pandemic, like everybody was opening up business. And I saw more mm-hmm. women open up business. I can honestly tell you one girl that I really looked up to, her name her business name is Bossy X Boulevard. I'm actually having a live with her this week, but oh, that's the reason really? why I even accepted was because she really, really inspired me so much. She actually is a vendor 
and she had nothing she has like nothing to do with what i do but i saw her how she was posting content she was doing this she was doing that she was trying to take care of a business and how her content was actually helping her create money so i started looking at other women entrepreneurs and i was like you know why are they even making content like what is the purpose of content um even when I was like marketing my own translations company, because I told you it started out as a translations company, like I had no idea how to market it. I was posting like the same three things on social media over and over again. And even one of my best friends told me like, hey, you need to switch up your content. Like you're posting the same thing over and over again. And I think like even at the beginning, like sometimes you need people to tell you like, hey, like yeah. I think you should switch it up or hey, I, sh I think you should try something different because if it wasn't for her even telling me, I don't think I would have even looked at how am I marketing my business and then that just led me to a spiral of more questions I had just by looking up certain things on YouTube. And did you always like know you were going to be an entrepreneur? I know you said your dad owned restaurants. Yeah. Was it like in your cards? Was it in your gut? Like, I know I'm going to be an entrepreneur or like, what did you envision for your life? Because being an entrepreneur is very scary, right? There's no safety net. Like it's, it's, it's very difficult, right? So did you always know in your gut that you were going to be your own boss one day? Or is this something like you just randomly grew the courage to do? Yeah, I think that um, honestly, I know we talk a lot about um, just trusting yourself as a woman and trusting your gut. And I think for me, like, I'm very, very spiritually like tuned with myself now. But looking back, I wish I would have just listened to myself because I remember um, when I was in my corporate job one day, there was this other girl that really inspired me. Her name is um, Demai Unique. And she actually started, she was the only girl that I knew in college that was going to school full time, but she was also doing her like stuff on social media. And again, mm -hmm. that was the second person that I really started to wonder. I'm like, what is she doing? Because she's never at school. Like I would see her come out of class she would leave right away I'm like she's really on her on her hustle and I used to always wonder I'm like what is she doing all the time that she's like never she was just never part of like the um like even stuff that we had to do outside of class like she was just on her shit like she was like I gotta go the like same real thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah and so um to answer your question I think that I remember with this specific one day on my corporate job when I I like I almost had like a vision and I was like what if I was like that you know what if I could start a business for my social media but I was like no that can never be me and it was like four years before I started my business wow. and then, you're planting the seed you're planting the seed yeah and then when I was younger like people used to always tell me like oh one day you're gonna take over your dad's restaurant and I used to be like no like I don't want to be an entrepreneur and um, it's crazy how, how life really does a 360 on you and it says mm -hmm. uh, this is your this is your purpose yeah no for sure it's crazy because it's already always been kind of like in your blood um mm -hmm. so once you started your career as like a social media manager what was that like like were you working another job like were you working another job trying to get your social media management business up did you quit that job or were you like man i literally need another client to like pay my rent or survive like what was that like that transition for you yeah Honestly, like I remember when I first quit my corporate job and I remember I had one stimulus check and then they gave you like one payoff check. So it was, it was almost like two checks to fall back on. And to answer your question, like I think when you're starting a business, like I had no idea what a niche was. I had no idea what how to stay in your own lane. So I was doing translations. I was doing websites. I was doing email marketing, like you name it. And so I was just trying to get like money from all from every single client. And to answer your question, like there were days where I was like, okay, like we got to pay that. Like I got to get one more client. So it's really depending on yourself. So that really taught me like a different kind of like discipline because it's almost like, okay, like you can't just be spending money on little things here and there like you used to. Um, but I think that once I started started learning more about social media management, I started taking like more free courses. I started reading more um ebooks i started doing more like free master classes i really, really learned just like the power of niching down and i'm gonna go into a little bit into content but i know a lot of people yeah. think like niching down is like oh just say that you're only gonna help like i don't know lawyers or you're only gonna help um i don't know you're only gonna help estheticians and so i think that in my journey now i've learned that niching is so unique like it's so you it's so specific to you so it's not really about 
about saying, oh, I'm only going to help this this specific type of person, but more so like narrow yourself down. Like, what are you an expert at? And I think for me, like that was the wake up call. Like, okay, like translations would have been like we talked about it. Translations would have yeah. been an amazing business. I just didn't know how to market it. And now yeah. that I'm like, super, super like deep into social media management i'm like okay that's my expertise area and i and i gotta stay there because once you really really develop that expertise area the money is going to come naturally and i know a lot of people say that but it really really does not come naturally because now people know what you are an expert at so to answer your question like it was hard transitioning from those normal consistent paychecks to only depending on yourself but i think over time you kind of learn like okay, you kind of have to stop doing everything and, and focus on your on your niche so that way you can charge a little bit more and mm-hmm. you can charge those prices that are going to fund your lifestyle at the end of the day because that's what we're an entrepreneurship for. Exactly. And yeah. for you, what is what would you say is your niche and how did you find your niche? So if someone's watching this, like, man, I've been hearing everyone say, I need a niche down, I need a niche down. I feel like it's a big topic of conversation. What is your niche and how would you suggest someone find their niche? Because I know it's so hard, right? Like as people, as we have so many different identities, so many things we like to do. So how would you advise someone to find their niche and what is your niche? Well, I think for me, like it took me the longest to find it because I didn't know what I was good at. Like I knew I was good at so many things, but I didn't know what am I truly, truly, truly good at. And I started to look at all the aspects of my life um and this is why i kind of take like social or social media and content outside of just social media right because anybody can show up on social media anybody can show you the perfect highlights of their business but if you don't do like the internal work on yourself it's going to be really hard for you to show up constantly and deliver a good you know a good view because your business is depending on you so to answer your question i really found my niche when i really started to to focus more on myself and what do i provide for the world so a lot of people think, like you said, a niche is helping just small businesses, just helping local businesses. A niche just really means, you know, what, what is the common solution that you're helping your clients solve? So for me, I looked at the common message and I'm like, okay, what am I doing in all the aspects of my life? And every single aspect of my life, I'm helping my audience find their voice. So that's why I kind of really, I really, really, um, dived into content strategists because Mm -hmm. i love content i love content so much and so many people ask me about content all the time so that was the one thing that everybody was asking me about was content but at the same time again anybody can create content so how am i going to separate myself from everybody else i will help you find your voice because a lot of people don't know how to find their voice a lot of people are not confident in certain areas um i know you talk a lot about you know finding your feminine power finding your Mm -hmm finding yourself, trusting yourself. So that I really consider you like an expert in that area because you're so good at that. You're so good at coming across with that message. So to answer your question, like I know it's a little bit longer, but yeah, no, we have time. Yeah. Really, really find like your why, you know, find what is it that you help people with? You know, if somebody tells you, Hey, I really, really like the way that you, you help me, um, see things in a different perspective maybe you're really really good at providing clarity for people. Maybe that's a good way that you could be like a coach. Maybe that's a good way that you could be a lifestyle coach. But I would say don't focus so much like on people's titles, focus more on what is like the emotion or what is a solution that that you're trying to help them solve at the end of the day. Yeah, no, I love that. Even just saying you help people find their voice like that is so powerful because I know so many people on social media I know them in person and then I see their like social media and I'm like, man, that is not you. Like you, yeah. you are so amazing. You have so much potential. You can just be yourself and express yeah. yourself on social media. Like, man. So I love yeah. that about you. And I love how you like specifically go into constant tra- uh, content strategies. And one thing I wanted to mention as well, because I have a media software company and when I started to dive into the media manager space, that's when I really dove deep into it. And if I'm being honest, one thing I noticed right off the bat that there's not a lot of like Latinos or Hispanic in the community, like social media manager or having an online presence, right? Just in general. And that's why like I know a couple like social media managers that are like Latinas as well. And they always have been top of mind like stood out to me actually yeah and I remember when I came across your page 
that like you literally had that in your bio like you can tell from your instagram that you represent the community i thought that was amazing and i love how you had like your branding with the pink so i want to ask you like do you know why there this is not a space with like more representation and like how do you feel you play into that like do you feel like it is like a part of your mission to like empower and help the community or how does like your identity and like your career go hand in hand together well this is such a good question so this goes back to like finding your voice and i think that's why when you're building a brand the more you can make it into like a personal brand the more it's going to resonate with people the more people are going to really really relate with you because at the end of the day you know anybody can look for a good business but people want to invest into you people want to invest into your mind people want to invest into your lifestyle people want to invest into your beliefs your thoughts how you live and i think for me that took me so long for me to finally just feel empowerment in that because i know we talked a little bit about my story but this is why i always say you have to be authentic with your story because if it's not authentic people are going to be able to tell on social media and so for me like my why has always been a little bit bigger than me because i talk about my story all the time but I grew up in an environment where I was like the only Latina. I was the only person of color, I want to say, for years until more students really started coming to my school. Um, and so for me, that's so important because I never saw anybody around me that looked like me. I never saw anybody around me that talked like me. Like I used to get in trouble so much when I was younger because I would do things that were different. Um, I don't think I've ever told this story before like on social media, but I got in trouble one time like when I was younger at a private school and I got suspended because you know how Latinas or Latinos, um, you like you say hi to somebody and you give them a kiss on the cheek. Yeah, I, was too, yeah. <laughs> I was too young to understand that you only do that with people that you know. So I started going back to school and I'm just saying hi to everybody. I'm like, let me kiss you on the cheek, let me kiss you on the cheek. And then some kids were like, um, you're not supposed to be kissing kids on the cheek. And they were so strict to the point that they were like, yeah, parents don't like that, like blah, blah, blah. So I got to spend it literally in like, I want to say first or second grade. Wow, um, that's crazy. But it's just like little stuff like that where it's like your culture is so different that sometimes when you're growing up, you're just like, you're not understanding. You're just trying to survive. And so for me, I think that's really my why. It's like, wherever i go i just want to make sure like another little brown girl or like another little brown boy you know sees representation and sees that this is possible for them and to answer your question i really really don't know why this isn't a more common job but at the same time like i'm such a psychology nerd so if we go back to like the you know cultural upbringing you know our parents always tell us to go to college and get a degree yeah. and i'm not saying that that's a bad path because if that's your path and if that makes sense to you then totally works for you but i think for some other people that's not always the path sometimes you go to you know you go to college they end up getting connections and you spend all this money for what when you're not even using your degree or even for social media like people don't talk about it enough in the hispanic community because it is something that we don't know and we don't know what we don't know um, and so that's another one of my whys is I want to make sure that more black and brown people come across all these resources because at the end of the day, we're the only ones that are missing out um, on so many opportunities. But That is so true. I just feel like we just lack awareness in this space. Right. And that's why I wanted to share your story, because I wanted to show other people like, hey, you can literally make a living off of helping people with their social media, which it sounds so crazy, but then you see like social media and then they have like their agencies and it's like, that is insane. Yeah. So if someone's like listening to this right now and they're like, man, like I want to be a content strategist like Jasmine, like she looks like me, she grew up similar to me. And I want to know the behind the scenes of how I can get started with this career and what are the pros and cons, right? Because it's mm -hmm. not very yeah. common where you can like reach out to a media manager. Hey, tell me the real behind the scenes. What do you love and hate about your job? So I'll start with the cons because I always tell people like, as much as I love my job, I'm not going to sit here and lie and say that it doesn't take a lot out of you because it really, really does. It takes a lot out of you. And I think that for me, like I found not that I'm an, I'm an expert at all, 
but I found like a perfect balance between work and, and really, really pouring back into yourself. And I think that's hard for a lot of entrepreneurs because there's going to be weeks where it's 80% business and 20% you. And then there's going to be other weeks where it's 20% business and then everything you because you deserve it. Um, mm -hmm. But to answer your question, like, I think for social media managers, the number one thing I would even suggest before we get into the cons is take care of yourself mm -hmm. first because it is a huge job where it depends so much off you and it depends so much off of you until you build your team that it's going to require you a lot. So to answer your question, some of the cons are when you're building up your team until you can outsource and you can hire more people, you're going to have to do all the work. And it is a lot of work because I don't think people realize that, you know, anybody can help you with content but if you want like a whole marketing team like that's a lot of people you have to do copywriting you have to do content creation you have to do video editing you have to do graphic design i mean the list goes on so when i would say like you're starting out your social media management there's just a little tip like increase your prices if you can and i always tell anybody that's wanting to become a social media manager like do not start cheap like you can start at lower prices for like less work but do not start cheap because when you set the relationship as starting out cheap they're always going to view you as cheap um mm -hmm. that is one of the huge cons is just learning how to do everything while charging the right amount but at the same time providing like a, a lot of value in your offers so that way you're actually providing results because we don't want to just be you know selling packages that are doing nothing and they're not really, really looking at the business model um Another con of it, I think, is that you really do need like a lot of, um, what is it called? You need like a lot of experience with like different business models because that was something that even I lacked. And at the beginning, like we talked about it, but I actually had one of my first disputes this year. And a lot of people don't talk about that, but yeah, there I are can get into that story. Yeah, that is going to happen and you have to know how to handle it. And that was a simply an error on my on my side because I didn't do the proper um I didn't do the proper vetting on my clients and I was accepting anybody. So I think that's also a con is that if you accept anybody, it might bite you in the butt later on because then you have to deal with the client that didn't want to pay all because they wanted more and they couldn't afford you. So really do like the right kind of vetting. Um, I always say if you can send like a five to 10 minute questionnaire before you get on a call, that's amazing, especially if you're going to work with them. So that way you can at least get to know each other a little bit more. And that was mm -hmm. something that I didn't, that I didn't do. So uh, another con is just you're going to have to like learn as you go. But that's why I love, love, love teaching, especially my Latinas, like what not to do. So that way they can learn from me. Um, because unfortunately, like I think with social media management, it's so new, but it's so like the people that are in it have been in it for a long time mm -hmm. that I'm not saying that they're not going to give you information, but it's a little bit harder to just go up to them and say, Hey, can you tell me like everything that's, you know, happened in, in the business? Um, mm -hmm. I know that there's a lot of cons, but the pros are if you can, like, if you can get like a good balance between, um, knowing how to structure your packages accurately so that way you're not spending more time working on the business than enjoying your life then i would say that's a huge benefit because i feel like i finally reached that point in my business where i'm like okay like i have a set structure for my packages i no longer have to be working you know more than i need to like my clients get a set structure where now i know what i need to do for them and on what days and what weeks so that way I can take that vacation three weeks now. I can take that, I don't know, vacation if I want to take it for a whole month and three months from now because I have um, systems. And we talk about systems all the time. But systems, I think a lot of people think like systems means like, oh, it's just like super fancy thing. Systems can literally mean, do you have a Google sheet on how do you, uh, how do you answer emails? Mm -hmm. Do you have a Google sheet on how do you respond to a client when they say, they need a, they like they have a question it's little things like that that are going to save you a lot of time so a huge con i mean a huge pro is really really once you like you master like the balance it is such a good job to have because you can increase your prices you know any day your value is going to keep going up and it's i don't think it's a job that's going to go anywhere anytime soon because technology is just on the rise every single day so i think once you master your foundation it's it's definitely an amazing job to have because i get to work from home every single day and 
it's it's just amazing and i think for me like the freedom that comes with it is we talked about this but as a latina there is so much freedom for me to be able to not be stuck in a restaurant eight hours a day not be stuck in a restaurant 12 hours a day make more money than you know my dad can make in a day and be able to go back home and, and help my family out so yeah no that's incredible and that's something that i always preach is like having time and location freedom like you right now there's no cap as to how much yeah. you can make you yeah. can grow your agency to how however much money you can even think of you can work from any place in the world at your own time you can raise yeah. your price tomorrow because you're the boss and it's just yeah. an incredible job honestly and i just love how passionate you're about you are about everything and what you do i feel like it really shines with your content and just following you on your account even when i talk to you you can tell you're a very passionate person so i i'm so happy to have you on but i want to talk about the dispute because i feel like this is something that we don't talk about and i remember when i saw your instagram you were like mention a dispute and all this stuff and how it intrigued me because yeah. a lot of the times on social media people we only talk about the good and the bad it's kind of like we're embarrassed or we're shy yeah. it's not so easy to talk about but the reality is so many of us are going to go through disputes especially if you're mm-hmm. a social media manager or any service-based business you're going to have disputes so can you tell us a little bit about the dispute what happened what you learned from it and how yeah. someone can avoid it as well Yes. I love actually that you asked me this question because I think, well, I want to make like a little series on my Instagram and even like dive into this even further. But mm-hmm. honestly, like the biggest mistake that I made and I even caught it myself, like as soon as I happened, I was like, it was my fault because I didn't do the proper betting. And that was something that, um, let's just say, have you seen those businesses that post on their stories? Like, Hey, I need a, uh, I need assistant. I need a social media manager. And yeah. Boxing like that yeah yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that was that was my first red flag so somebody had posted a story like that and i was and i told myself i was like you know what let me shoot my shot like i could get this opportunity um and it was this very very well-known um business woman Mm -hmm. and it not only knows me but i never like to call anybody out because i think as women like we already have so many people against us so i'm never going to come on here and wear another woman down but I also wouldn't be authentic if I would be sitting here and I would be telling you guys like, oh, like nothing happened because that's not true. And I think that when you're on social media, you do have to be authentic because people look up to you, like you said, and people you can tell when somebody's being authentic or not. So for me, it's really important that I say authentic. So my followers know that if I make mistakes, like I'm going to own up to it. And I think that was my issue with the dispute is that it wasn't even about the dispute. It just taught me so much about social media because I'm over here just naive thinking, oh, everybody has good intentions. Like, yeah. you know, nobody, nobody shows like fake stuff on Instagram. And I caught, I, I got, I got caught in that loop. Um, and so after the dispute happened, let me kind of go back, but Anyways, I didn't met my client properly, so I sent her a DM. Um, she didn't want to get on a discovery call. Another red flag. Red flag, um, for sure. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And we did like all the communication through email. Finally, made her book a call because she didn't want to get on a book on a call. So I, I told her I was like, that's just how my company works. Like you have to get on a call with me, um, mm-hmm. so we can really discuss everything. She finally got on a call. Um, after the call, she wanted to switch things up changed the proposal another red flag ignored it um because again i just wanted a client i just wanted to sign somebody on Mm -hmm. Uh, fast forward we finally signed the contract when she goes to sign the contract she signs the contract late so now we have to start one month later because she signed the contract late so we have to push back her date. Another red flag that I didn't. I, I just was ignoring flags left and right. You're like um, this. <laughs> I know. Um, and then after that, the last month, we had our meeting because I always tell my clients, like, at the end of every month, we always have a meeting. So that way we can go over mm-hmm. your numbers. We can go over your content. We can, you know, just talk about anything you want to change and how we can improve in the future. Um on the last call, we got we get on the call and she says, Well, I want to add this, 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 but this is my budget. And I told her, I was like, you know, just to be honest with you, like my company, the only reason that we even gave her the price to work with her at that price was because I was like, let me get more experience mm-hmm. so that we can build up my portfolio and then I can 
change my um my prices on my on my services because my prices were really low and if anybody knows about social media management like if you're charging anything less than a thousand it's it's low like you shouldn't yeah. be charging less than a thousand and i was That's like your starting point guys if you're yeah. a media manager starting point a thousand yeah and i was definitely undercharging um and after that i'm like i just realized that i have short like here the whole time no you're good <laughs> <laughs> you're good what happened to your camera can you see oh, give me one second oh, no. No. not sure why that happened give me one second. well i'll continue talking while she's getting that fixed um yeah oh yeah, yeah but you're sorry okay okay but yeah, anyway, so um, last call, we get on the call. She requested a bunch of work that wasn't in our budget. I tried to tell her, I tried to explain to her like, hey, like we only send you on at the low price so that way you could see our work and you can see that we do provide results. We did do everything we were supposed to. So it wasn't like we lied to her or anything about it. But again, she just wanted more work that was outside of her budget. I think she wanted to manage like three platforms for... 1200 and if anybody knows like that's a no-no like no that's mm -hmm. you you that's a lot yeah yeah and so honestly like it was just a lesson learned um the last month when she was supposed to pay her invoice she paid it but right after that she disputed it she said that she didn't remember the charge i'm like we have a whole contract you signed i don't know how you forget and um I try to I try to like show the contract to the processor of like the um, ACH processor, and they wouldn't uh -huh. take it. So that unfortunately with disputes, like you just have to be really careful with the with the customers and have communication with them. And unfortunately, I do bank with Bank of America, and I've heard that not the best thing. So yeah. Um, yeah, that was just a lesson learned to again charge your worth and to vet your clients properly. Like if they say they can't afford you do not lower your prices because i think that i was stuck um to be transparent with you guys like i was stuck i want to say like one to one to two k months for like almost like a year a year and a half all because mm -hmm. i was willing to change my prices and i was doing so much work i was really overworking myself just to make one like one or two k a month but it wasn't even worth it and now i'm like i have less clients and i'm making about the same or a little bit more and it just feels so good because again, I got my foundations right. So yeah, know your worth. Yeah, know your worth. And how do you think that situation like shaped you? Like, how did you feel after where you like, man, like maybe I shouldn't do this. Like, what if this happens to me again? Or like, how am I going to move forward? Like, what, what was your thought process after this like dispute happened? Yeah. Um, honestly, I think it was a learning lesson. Like, I think that everything happens in your life for a reason. Yeah. Um, you want me sounding cliche, but everything does happen in your life for a reason. I think that after it, like it was a huge, huge learning lesson because it made me realize like how many um holes there were in my business. And that's why I feel like don't become a social media manager if you just want quick money because that's not how it's gonna work. I think that especially with service-based entrepreneurs, like we talked about it, but especially with service-based entrepreneurs, like you have to build your trust 10 times more than if you were selling a product. So you really, really have to be like in a business for like the long term. So if you're in it for the long term and if you're doing all the work, um, then you're going to succeed. And I was actually listening to a podcast recently and mm -hmm. they said they, they put like business in a whole different perspective and it made sense. Um, I listen. I don't know if you listen to Donnie Wiggins, but she's like a business coach. Mm, I have to check her out. Yeah, I listened to her on the Social Crew podcast and she was saying how your business is just a puzzle a puzzle piece and all you're doing is just putting the pieces together and i never looked at my business like that until she said that and now i'm like it totally makes sense like every single year you're just going to be building the puzzle and adding another puzzle piece so you really have to be in it for the long road because even with my clients i always tell them that that you know a social media manager isn't going to isn't going to fix your sales problems. It isn't going to fix your leads problems. If there's other work that you have to do within your business, so you really really need to work with the social media manager that that's not only a social media manager but that has like a little bit of like business um, coaching advice for you. So that way they can look at the bigger picture and they can look at the bigger model of your business because I think that that's 
another gap between social media yeah. managers and, and businesses is a lot of social media managers just want to come in and handle content but they're not looking at the bigger picture of the business. And so I think for me, like to answer your question, I learned to not only look at the marketing aspect of businesses, but look at the bigger picture. You know, how is their offer? You know, do they even know their target audience? Do they even um, have business foundation set up? Because obviously like if you don't have a website and you're on Instagram and you get a social media manager, it's only going to help you so much if you don't have a website, if you don't have email marketing, like a social media manager can do everything for you. So, mm -hmm. and I think that's just hearing you and the way you speak throughout this call. That's something I love about you is like, you're not just a social media manager and you don't even call yourself that you're a content strategist and a coach. And it just shows in the way you speak because you're not there. Like I'm going to make you graphics and run your social account. You're like going beyond that. Like I can yeah. tell that you, you, you know, you're constantly working on business and your mindset and you're just such a well-rounded person. Right. And then you're bringing that into other people's businesses and like, Hey, you know, yeah. like other, you're kind of, going into the details of other pieces of their business. And I'm like, wow, that's amazing. And it makes sense why you're not like market yourself as a social media manager, because it yeah. shows even throughout this conversation, you're a content strategist and a coach. And I'm just thinking like, man, imagine all the work you had to do to get to where you're at. Yeah. And I, I wanted to ask you like, at what point in like your career or maybe your childhood, did you hit like a breaking point or like a lowest, like a low moment where you like something has to change? Like I have it within mm -hmm. to be the best version of myself and to grow. Right. I know you say you didn't want to be like your dad or like work the restaurants. Right. So like yeah. what was like a low or like the hardest moment where you had like that realization of like, man, I am going to be like that person that I always dreamed of and have like time and location freedom. So what was that mm -hmm. moment? Yeah. so honestly like i know me and natalie have this conversation but honestly like the reason that i focus so much like on mindset and getting your soul together and just getting just getting you aligned is because i i'm a firm believer that if you don't have like a rock bottom moment that makes you just think about life and think about like just that darkest place that you've been in you're never going to change and i know for me like i can only speak for myself but i had two experiences where um it really shook me to like the bottom of my core. And I was like, you know what? Like, I can't keep being this person. Like I have to change. Um, and for me, it was definitely like my first breakup. You know, obviously we all had like a super, super bad breakup that we never want to talk about. Like it was just yeah. super traumatic, but it was just like a wake up call. And it was just kind of, it was such a wake up call in a way that I had to look at myself and say, you know, you're doing so much for other people, but you're not doing enough for yourself. And so that was definitely a huge wake up call. But even I think after that, like, you know, you know, that saying, like, it goes in one ear and it goes out the other, right? Yeah. And so I was like, you know what, like, I, I was working on myself, blah, blah, blah. And then I think I fell into like, in college, before I even knew that I wanted to start a business, I think that as individuals, we carry so much trauma, whether it be through our, you know, our how we were raised through our family through generational trauma and i had no idea what trauma was i just know that i had been going through so much like mm -hmm. um after the breakup i started having anxiety uh, i didn't even know what anxiety was and so i really really just found myself in this like super super just dark place where i had no idea really who i was like i was just hanging out with anybody i was you know still working but i just i wasn't i wasn't myself and um I think I've told the story like a little bit on my um, on my Instagram, but I haven't really talked about it a lot. But unfortunately, I was making like a lot of bad choices that it led me to a point that I didn't know where I was for almost 24 hours. Um, I did get like kidnapped. Um, I know it's not funny. And I just laugh because that's my coping mechanism. So if anybody finds this like weird, like I promise I'm okay. But um, yeah so i got kidnapped for almost like 24 hours and like it was crazy like the police were called like we had to do like a um an investigation report and, and how old were you at this time or like how did that come about i know it's like not not easy to yeah. talk about but like how old were you at that time or like how did that come about yeah um i think i was about i want to say 21 i was 21 and i was i think i was no, I was, I was, I was about to turn 23. So I, uh, okay. I was 22. Yeah. It was before I turned 23. So I'm, I'm 25 by the way. Um, so this was before I turned 23. It was when I was 22. 
Um, like I said, I thought I was going in a better direction and out of just nowhere, like I just hit this like super, super dark place and it was just a bad place. I was hanging around like around the, around the wrong people. I was around the wrong environment. I thought partying every weekend was going to get me anywhere. And it just led me to like a bad, bad choices to a point where I went to a party, didn't know whose party it was. Um, all I know is I was with my friend and I for sure, this is, I think this is why I, like to talk about it a little bit more because I want to make sure that other women like have that support. But I'm almost positive that like my drug or my drug, my um my drink was uh was drugged, and I didn't know that for sure. But I just like you know when you feel that in your gut, right. I'm like I yeah, it's different. You're like this, this is different, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I felt it in my gut. I'm like that wasn't normal. Like no normal drink. Like I know for a fact I was drugged and. It was so crazy. Like, I don't think I've ever talked about this before, but the next day, like, I remember waking up and I had no idea where I was. Like, I was at somebody's random apartment. Like, I had to get out of there. I had to call somebody, like, pick me up. Like, it was it was bad. And I think after that moment, I was like, you know what? Like, I never want to put myself in that situation where I have no idea what I'm even doing in my life. And so that was really a wake up call for me. It was like, you know, you're either going to keep following like all that trauma, like keep blaming everything else on how you were raised, keep blaming everything else on other people. You know, at some point you have to take accountability and look at yourself and say, you know, I'm the problem. And so I think that, yeah, that was like the wake up call for me. And I was like, you know what? Like, if it's not helping me, like my, if it's not helping my soul, if it's not helping my life, if it's not helping my family, like it just does not deserve to be around me. But yeah, I feel like that story literally gave me chills. Like, that is so yeah. crazy. And and it just shows, like, anyone that's listening right now, like, I feel like listening to this interview, we're like, wow, like, you're amazing. Look all that you're doing. Like, you have your yeah. own business. But what no one sees is, like, how you, how you got there, right? Yeah. So my hope is that people listen to this and, like, man – that happened to her like and now that's a, that's like a couple years ago and i feel like you completely changed your life since yeah. then so i hope it, it it inspires and i know for a lot of us who are like really young we all go through a phase where we're kind of like partying a lot or like hanging out the mm-hmm. wrong people what advice would you give to them to like make that shift so maybe they don't have to go through like a traumatic experience for them to change their life or like what would you tell your like 22 year old self before that happened like what advice would you give her to change her life around honestly i was going to say as simple as it sounds i think spending more time with yourself and i think that's where truly truly came from was because like even like when you're like latina or you're growing up hispanic like you're always surrounded by people you're always at parties like you're always distracting yourself with something and i think for me like i had no idea what meditation was i had no idea what stretching was i had no idea what you know i would always be going to the gym but i never really looked at it as like a as a meditation and until that happened i started just like questioning myself more i'm like okay why do i think the way that i do like why do i do that the way that i do and i'm a i think i'm just so into like doing like the shadow work now and just uncovering the things that you have to do because if you don't one day it's really gonna build up and it's gonna take you to a place that you're like how did i get here and i think for me that it was that i wasn't really sitting down with myself i wasn't really processing life i was always um you know, especially being like Latina, not not that it's an excuse, but I was just always hustling. Like I was always trying to get a job. I was always trying to get money. I was always trying to be in college that the first time that I do get in college and I let myself, you know, go a little bit out. I'm like, I went out like too much. And for yeah. me, I think it was just like learning how to sit with yourself and learning how to process your own thoughts. Like, you know, question yourself, you know, mm. it goes into like the small details of, of your life. So for me, it was like, I don't know, like, why do you, why do you raise your voice after you get agitated? And Mm -hmm. sometimes for me, like, I had to look at myself, I'm like, oh, like, I raised my voice because I was so used to being raised in a house where we didn't talk, we we just yell. So I think literally just like sitting down with yourself and questioning everything, you know, why are you even hanging out with the people that you do? You know, why are you friends with them? Is it just like a soul friendship? Or is it just more like on the surface level and, and you're just going out to party? So yeah. 
No, I love that. I, I just can feel even through the screen how much like inner work that you've done. Like, and I didn't, I didn't know that story, but hearing that story, I'm like, well, I'm like, like so proud of the person that you've become. And I just love the message that you put is like finding your voice. And in a way, when you say that story, it's that like you found your voice and like your purpose. So I feel like it all kind of like ties into like the person you become. Um, yeah. So I think that's honestly incredible. And I love your message of helping other like businesses find their voice as well. Because even as a business, yeah. you feel lost sometimes. Like you feel lost. Yeah. Like what is my branding? What is my identity online? What is my voice? Who's my client? Who am I trying to attract? And just like in your personal life, you, you have those moments where you feel lost. Like, man, what is my next steps? What am I going to do? So I, I love your mission of helping people find their voice. And for those who, I know we have a lot of business owners that are watching this podcast as well. For those who want to grow their social presence and are trying to grow, because I think people are starting to finally realize the importance of social media. Like, I think it finally <laughs> At first, it was like, oh, like, oh, like all the kids are doing TikTok yeah. or whatever. But then yeah. people started to realize, like, especially for a business, it is essential to have a social media presence, right? And mm -hmm. I know within my community as well, I always get so many questions like, oh, man, like I'm shy or I'm scared. I don't know how to put myself out there. I don't know what to post. Or like I know a lot of women, they have businesses, but they're not leveraging their social media. So mm -hmm. what advice would you give to them in like starting to be consistent with social media and finding their voice on social media as well? Yeah. Well, I think I'll, I want to give out two little pieces of advice because I want to go back to what you said really quick. Um, you said that you like you well let me i just forgot what you said you said that you like love um oh you said how you love that i help uh business find their voice and that's why i always preach like finding like a personal brand because i was there where i was trying to find my niche i was trying to find i'm like okay what am i really an expert at and i think that i was stressing myself out so much more trying to be just trying to ask myself okay like how can i make this perfect you know how can i make my bio perfect how can i make my instagram like perfect like other um, what is it called? Like other service providers that have been in the business for, you know, for longer. And I think that, that trying to find like, Oh, the way it should be was stressing me out so much more than actually just asking myself, I'm like, okay, what do you want for your life? So to answer the question, like find your why first, like find, you know, why did you even want to start a business online? Why is this important to you? Is it because you want to create generational freedom for your family? Is it because you want to take care of your mom? Is it because you want to take care of your parents? Is it because you want to provide more opportunities for other people? So I think start there, find your why first. So that way, when you do show up on social media, I always tell people social media should be like an extension of who you are. And if it's not an extension of who you are, it means that you're trying to show something that's not, that's not real. You're trying to showcase something that's, that's just not realistic. And that's why I think that service-based businesses or just personal brands tend to do a little bit better because again, we can all be a business. A business can be great, but how are you connecting with your audience? Like, how are you connecting to their dreams? How are you connecting to their goals? How are you helping them achieve their success? Um, mm -hmm. So when you start there, like ask yourself your why, why do you want this to work? And then just be consistent. Like if you get anything from this video, just be consistent. Um, it takes practice. Like you said, like, everybody's figuring this out so i don't expect anybody to just listen to this video and be a social media expert by tomorrow because that's not how it works but just take away that every single day you're going to be adding a new piece because i'm still adding pieces to my journey i'm still adding pieces to my puzzle piece and every day you're you're going to discover that maybe you put the puzzle piece on wrong and you have to put it somewhere else so <laughs> yeah. you just have yeah. to learn every single day and um i think overall just be humble because like in, i think in the beginning like when i used to get a sale i used to be like oh I'm, so, I'm on top of the world like i got a sale and i think after my dispute process happened it just i was already um super into meditation like i told you like really just you know meditating five times like five minutes a day like even even stretching is meditation for me like i don't have anything around me it's just quiet noise and i'm just stretching but um for me like really really um i just lost my train of thought i don't even know where i was <laughs> i lost my train of thought you're talking um, about how you're meditating and journaling after your dispute yeah yeah okay okay so, yeah yeah after my dispute i think it really, really taught me that 
if you're always like thirsty for that next sale, you're always, this is something my coach showed me or she showed me like a diagram. It's, I have to remember what the name is, but it's like this business diagram that shows you that every time you learn something new, you're always going to be chasing that high. And once it gets hard, then, then what happens? You go down a little bit and you kind of get frustrated and then you, you hit like a, like a light bulb moment and then you figure it out that's going to be everything in business and that's going to be your whole life so if you're always chasing that sale you're always going to be chasing the high and you're never going to be satisfied so i think for me like the biggest thing that changed like just the direction of my business was always to like i know it sounds so cliche but just say zen like even if like the, like the baddest check comes like of course be happy but just yeah. remember stay zen because you just never know you know, tomorrow you won't get that check. You know, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be happy, but just like always stay zen. Like don't always be chasing the high, but then always remember that your lowest low is not always going to be your low. And there's always going to be, you know, a better day or a better journey or a better high. Yeah, no, I love that message because business is up and down. And if you ride the wave of all those emotions, you will be like just emotionally exhausted. Yeah, exhausted. So I <laughs> I love that. Yeah. And then I get a lot of people message me and they're like, oh, like, I don't have the confidence to like go or especially like speaking on camera, right? Like, I know that's like really, really hard for people to yeah. like speak on camera, whether they're embarrassed or they're ashamed, they're scared of people, what people will say. What advice do you have for like those people who want to show up on social media and want to talk to the camera and post about their business, but they have something inside of them that's like holding them back? Um, I would also, I would honestly say just like practice. I know we talked about consistency and practice, but practice, like even if you never post it on social media, like I'll show you guys right now, but I'm literally recording behind the scenes content just for my phone. And I don't have to be talking to the camera directly. It's just recording like me talking to you. So if you want to show up on social media, like I always tell my clients, that's the easiest way to record content. Just record content of behind the scenes. Maybe you're washing the dishes, something as simple as that. If you're a mom, wash the dishes or do laundry. But then put a message that aligns with your brand on top of it. Um, mm, for example, that. like let's just say that um, I always use examples because I feel like this is easier. But let's just say that you're uh, a mindset coach for moms. Mm -hmm. As a mom, I'm, I'm sure that not to be sexist or anything, but I'm sure as a mom, you're you're doing laundry for your little ones. You know, you're doing uh, mm -hmm. laundry for your kids. You know, your husband might help, but if you're doing laundry and you're you're um, a mom like a mindset coach then maybe on top of that reel of you doing laundry you're going to you would say point of view um you don't have to stress about your bills anymore because your business uh coaching program is sold out or point of view you never have to stress out about you know clocking into a nine to five because now you get to run your own business but we don't always have to look at the camera and I know it's like easier said than done, but just practice, like practice, practice, practice. Cause I can't tell you how many videos I would post and I would say, Oh my God, that looks so cringy. And then over time, like you just, you just get used to it. Like you really, really do. I love that. But I'm going to take your advice and just, I love that. Like sometimes you don't need to talk to the camera. You can literally yeah. film the role of your life. If you go yeah. to a cop shop, if you're doing this interview, whatever, even if, like you said, washing the dishes, whatever it is, record yourself and then just put text on the screen. And I think that's yeah. an amazing way to start. Yeah. I love that advice. Yeah. And so repurpose your content. <laughs> you what? No, I, no, I said, and repurpose your content. Cause I think we forget about that one a lot. Like, all the videos that you have turn those videos into posts and all the posts that you have turn those into videos like it's the easiest way to come up with more content and you don't really have to do much so i love that and for someone that's listening to this and they're like man like i want to work with jasmine i need help with my social media i want to find my voice online whether it's my personal or business um how can they start working with you what is that process like yeah so right now, um, I told you like my dispute happened. Um, it's funny that, that you say that because the whole time I've, I've been talking about the dispute, but I, I don't want to make this a little bit longer than it needs to, but I say this to say like, 
a lot of people look for that perfect moment, like the perfect moment to launch their offers, the perfect moment to, oh, let me start coaching now, or the perfect moment to finally accept clients. There's never going to be a perfect moment. And I say that because I had my dispute in March and a lot of people think like, oh, you have like a dispute in March, you should be over it. That dispute, I want to say, shut down my business for a good two months. And that wasn't because I had to, that was because I wanted to. I wanted to shut down my business because there was just no way that I was taking more clients without me really having like the proper experience with your service. So I say that to say, if you're launching a service, just make sure that you include enough experience because mm -hmm. there's like a line with social media, with, uh, with business, you have to make sure that you're putting a good offer and it has enough experience, but then you're also not just putting offer out there just because you want to make some money because mm -hmm. I know we're all in here for money, but it has to be bigger than the money. So yeah. to answer your question, like, it took me out for a little while and I'm finally accepting clients again in August, but I'm only accepting clients for coaching and for social media management. So if you feel like, you know, I have no idea what my why is, I have no idea how to even start getting clarity on who my target audience, who my niche is, you know, how to perfect an offer, how to create offers that sell, um, then I would definitely invite you to my coaching because I think coaching would be a really good place for, mm -hmm. for anybody to start to get their foundations right. Um, and then, yeah, if you need your social media man, your social media managed because you don't have time, then definitely send me a message and we can talk about how my agency can help you with your social media management. Yes, I love that. And we're going to be linking your Instagram down below so they can shoot you a DM. And then this is the last question that I want to leave off on. Yes. Where do you see yourself in five years? I feel like in the last five years, you've drastically literally changed your life. I know you recently moved and you're diving deep into this space. So in five years, where do you like envision your life? Um, so in five years, I really, really, really envision my life having my marketing agency build up. That's really a goal of mine is to be able to just build up a company. So one, I can say that I, I can do it. And two, so that way I can have an agency that can run itself and then I don't have to be in there all the time. Um, and my second goal would just be really to create passive income. There are so many ways I want to create passive income, but I just know for myself and one of my, like my main, main, um, passions is really investing into real estate one, because I have so many ideas with it. Like I'm thinking, like we talked about how in the space, there's not a lot of Latina social media managers, but then there's also not a lot of spaces for Latinas or Latinos to go shoot content. I know in Atlanta, it's probably one of like the only places that I know that has like um, so many studios where you can go shoot um, shoot content. But cool. I haven't seen a lot in like even in Cincinnati where I used to live at. Like there wasn't a lot of studios for people to record content or for people to even like um, record sessions for like a relatively mm -hmm. low price. And so that's really a goal of mine is really, really to invest into real estate, but then also carry it into like a bigger purpose. Like how can we get Latinos and Latinas to use their voice um, in our properties. So, yeah. That, that's so I love your message. I feel like you do such an amazing job of helping people find their voice. And I feel like for me, we actually had a private call and we were, we, we, I didn't even know how that call came about. We literally just got on a call. We got to know each other yeah. and we were just talking. And I remember you're like, oh, you gave me a tip. You're like, hey, you should fix this on your Instagram because like you oh, are. Yeah own it right and in a way I feel like you helped me find my voice because deep down like I knew that but I feel like I couldn't like own it and it's crazy to think that's like your whole message because yeah. since that moment I literally have shifted my entire perspective of like who I am and what I offer to people I swear it's been like the highlight of my month stepping into that like realm of coaching and helping yeah. and I can think even my fiance he's like ever since you had that call with Jasmine everything changed and I was like wow it's kind of full circle because I feel like you helped me find my voice so yeah. it is so crazy oh, and I just love everything that you're doing and I never thought of like creating a studio to like help people film and because like yeah. there's so much barrier in creating content like yeah. oh my, my house isn't aesthetic like I don't have the cameras I don't know how yeah. to do it especially for our community as well so I would love to see that come to life and I just love your vision I feel like it's so crystal clear you have so much clarity mm -hmm. and I know throughout your journey you're gonna help so many people and I just cannot wait to see it come to life yeah 
And I just want to add that that's funny that you said that because I've had a couple other people tell me like, oh, I don't see myself as that yet. And that's so funny because I think that we're always like our biggest critic because I even did it. Like my coach told me in like year when I'm when I was um, introducing myself to people, I would always say like, oh, I'm a social media manager. I'm I'm a service provider. And she yeah. was she was telling me, I'm like, you need to walk in the room and say I'm the biggest marketing agency out here and I'm the best marketing agency out here and own it. And I'm like, I what? It's it's like it's such a small detail, but I don't think like you ever pay attention until somebody else says it. And I love that you noticed that because I'm like Natalie, like you're you in my eyes, you're like a like a a really really good business coach. And I'm like, you should own it because you are. Um, yeah. But no, I'm just glad that I was helpful to you in any way I can. Yeah. But I I say that to say because I wanted to add that a lot of people like. I even did it myself where I was waiting on one year to change my prices. Like you don't need to wait any amount of time. You don't need to gain three clients. You don't need to gain 10 clients to get experience. Like if you feel like you have the experience now, then change your title, Ch change your prices, but don't wait on anybody else to give you that. Change your identity. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. love that because for the longest time, my fiance is like, yeah, like you literally are a business coach. And I'm like, but I'm 23. He's like, yeah, but you have four businesses in the airport in real estate. He's like, at what age is it going to hit? And I was like, yeah. I don't know. And then I got on that call with you. He's like, wow, it took Jasmine to tell you. And I'm like, yeah, maybe. So <laughs> now I've embraced it. And I'm like, man, that's true. Like, yeah. it doesn't matter my age. I literally have bootstrapped four businesses from the ground up, software, yeah. service, different industries to be super successful yeah. and I feel like you really helped me in that call without even knowing it like that wasn't the intention of the call we were just having conversations so I just yeah. you really embody that like finding your voice you embody that 100% and I cannot wait to see what you're gonna do for the future I know you have so much to give and I love that you're representing the community in this space that lacks representation so I'm just so proud of everything that you're doing. No, thank you. Thank you. No, and I was just going to say, I was just going to say, like, I think that's another thing that a lot of us, like, um, I know I keep dragging it out, but that's yeah, a lot of, that's a thing that a lot of, like, we talked about it, but a lot of, like, especially, like, women of color struggle with is that we're so used to taking direction from somebody else that we, you know, myself included, because I do it all the time where I'm, like, asking my boyfriend, I'm like, is this, is this, is this? And I'm just yeah. like, okay have to be sure of myself and I have to I like stop questioning myself so much because at the end of the day like we get in our own in our own heads and we really mm -hmm. stop ourselves so I'm just glad I'm, I'm so glad that you found because I think you already have it you just have to tap into it and I'm so glad that you tapped into like your full confidence and you're like you know what I'm that business coach because you are yeah yeah, yeah no it was it was amazing and I'm so thankful that <laughs> I met a friend like you and just seeing us grow together. And I know you're going to be able to help so many people and you need to do a whole segment. I help people find their voice, whatever on social media. You. We really you. Do. So I want to end this by thanking you so much for being on the girly Preneurs podcast. There was so many good parts of this and I cannot wait to share your story with the world and bring more representation. And I want to thank you so much for being here with me today and just being a good friend of mine. And I cannot wait. Hopefully we can meet up soon whenever you come to LA or whatever it is. But I'm thankful that social media has brought us together. And I'm just thankful that you crossed my life and you've been able to help me find my voice. And I can't wait for others to hear this, reach out to you so you can help them as well. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you, Natalie. And thank you for this um, spotlight. Thank you for letting me use your voice because that's important for you to say, you know what, let me share my spotlight and, and let me, you know, put somebody else in this position. I just thank you. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bye, Jess. Okay, bye.